Today, we are at Brussels Airport to test the Amio shuttle, operating airside. In this video, we have the chance to ask our questions to Camille Luban, Project Manager for Brussels Airport and Kevin Denis, Senior R&D Engineer for Omeo Europe. Je suis chez Omeo là depuis un an et je suis, on va dire, le Senior R&D Engineer uh, pour Omeo Europe. My name is Camille Lebeau. I'm working for Brussels Airport company as mobility and accessibility experts. So in my team, we're mainly focusing on the long-term accessibility of the airport for passengers, staff, but also for cargo and logistics. If we talk about long-term strategy and long-term accessibility, we of course also think about new mobility solutions. One of them is autonomous mobility, autonomous vehicles. Therefore, we are starting now with the first test, with the first proof of concept to see if we can implement autonomous vehicles at Brussels Airport in the future. For the moment, the ambition of Brussels Airport is also to see where is the business case, and so, instead of maybe having two navettes here, to see, for example, in relying a parking and a terminal, that maybe the business case will be there, and so always start with one navette and see after how much we need to increase. The project is managed by Brussels Airport Company. We do receive funding and support from the European Commission under the Stargate Green Deal program. The operators are from transit services. They are our bus drivers, so they know the airport very very well and with the technology provider we are working together with Omeo who provides us uh, with the shuttles and all the supports to make it operational possible. Omeo uh, c'est un fabricant de voitures autonomes de Nouvelle-Zélande. Elle a commencé son aventure là-bas. Ensuite, uh, les premiers projets ont été en Corée du Sud et ensuite leur aventure en Europe a commencé au Luxembourg et très vite aussi à Amsterdam sur Schiphol. In this project, we deployed an autonomous shuttle airside for staff. So we transport staff from an entry point towards their offices. We have two stops. We have one stop at the A pier and one stop at the B pier for staff to go to their office. We have autonomous shuttle with a capacity of eight people and a safety operator. All the passengers can be seated and have to be seated. The vehicle itself has six radars who give a 360 view around the vehicle for the, for the vehicle so it can anticipate on other traffic, it can make a decision, it can cross a certain road or it can, can go on a road. The captors are very prominent, so they are radars that will send des pulses de lumière et qui vont détecter grâce au retour de ces lumières savoir où sont les obstacles autour d'elles. Donc c'est des détecteurs qui vont jusqu'à 100 mètres et grâce aux six capteurs on arrive à vraiment bien voir tout autour de la navette pour être sûr de garantir une opération complètement safe. At this point in time we do have a safety driver, a safety operator inside of the vehicle still. He checks if everyone is wearing seat belt for example, if the maximum capacity of eight people is not exceeded. The staff, they can just jump in the vehicle. It's, uh, every 10 minutes there is a service at every stop. So they just uh, step into the vehicle and they step out where they want. The vehicle itself drives at a maximum speed of 25 kilometers an hour. At the airside part of the airport, the maximum speed in general is 30 kilometers per hour. So with the vehicle driving at 25, it's still a safe solution and it still can react very well with, with the other traffic. There are no incidents there. We have two shifts, one morning shift and one afternoon shift uh, because we see the highest peaks of staff coming in and leaving the airport are in those two, two shift changes. The main challenges we faced were firstly uh, the operational challenge because we are in an operational environment. We need to see of course that the autonomous vehicle does not have to impact at our operations. Uh, we are an airport so our main job is to make sure that our planes can arrive and can depart from the airport. So that was one important challenge to see how can we fit the vehicle into the operations because the vehicle at this moment is really driving in the heart of our operations where there is a lot of traffic, a lot of movement, there is a lot of stress of course within the people working airside because they have to be at the plane on time, they have to bring luggage towards the plane etc. Another challenge was the regulatory topic and, and the safety and the legal topics of course. We did not have any experience here at Brussels airport with autonomous vehicles airside so it was for a lot of departments a new technology uh, without knowledge of it. So that was also a challenge just to get all the approvals from the internal and external stakeholders to get the vehicle airside. We see mainly challenges with the interaction between human drivers and the autonomous vehicle, of course, because the autonomous vehicle follows the rules, the traffic rules, and it will stop at every stop sign and it will take its time. 
to see if it's safe to, 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 to cross or to go on, on the road. Where we see that sometimes the human drivers are driving more fluently, uh, let's say, taking maybe some more risk than an autonomous vehicle will take, so sometimes we see there. The goal of the project was to see if it's feasible to bring autonomous vehicles on the airside part of the airport. Uh, we can say that at this moment we already proved that it's possible. It is driving around airside. For the longer term, we are still developing use cases and business cases to see if we could extend the route that we are doing now, if we could offer other services, extra services towards staff and in the long-term future, uh, maybe even passengers who need to be transported from a certain pier to another pier or from the pier towards a, an airplane. On the land side part, we are also looking for deployments of autonomous vehicles, where we then mainly are focusing on connecting the terminal where the train station is with uh, other parts of the airport that are not really well connected by public transport. Or for example, we could also connect some remote parkings for staff and or passengers towards our uh, passenger terminal.